Hey guys, today we're going to be collecting my absolute favorite wild berry, which is the mulberry. Uh, we're actually inside the city limits. We're uh, actually on Baxter Avenue here in Madisonville, Kentucky. And there's several mulberry trees along this uh, old fence row. And we're going to collect a gallon, half gallon or so. I'm going to make a little bit of jelly and then have a few extra to, to nibble on tonight. Stick around and I'll show you the process. Okay guys, here's what we're looking for. You see these, the, the darker fruit? See that looks almost exactly like a, a, a blackberry. And you know they're ripe when they're um, big, plump, soft, and black like that. Just like a uh, blackberry. The red ones, which are harder, they're going to be very bitter. They're not ready. So like I said, what we're going to do, we will be collecting these black ones like this. Hey guys, I want you to take a look at these berries. They're just like blackberries when they're ripe. They're solid, um, black all over, no red in them. Uh, they're very soft. And uh, I, that's when I like to pick them, when they're good, plump, and soft. When they're soft, they're really, really sweet. They're delicate, but they're extremely sweet, and, and they're awesome, awesome fruit. Uh, by far, my favorite fruit, and the only way that I know to describe them, is a mixture between blackberries, raspberries, and a little bit of a blueberry, but a lot sweeter than other berries. You gotta try these. They're great. Only drawback. If you pick them when they're, when they're ready to be picked, your fingers are going to get purple and it's hard to get off. Enjoy them. Okay guys, it took me about an hour and a half. These are relatively small berries. Um, but I got this Folgers can full. I figure it's about a half gallon. Um, some tips. Uh, some t uh, The takeaway from this, when you're picking these, these uh, mulberries, always keep in mind that you're going to be up off the ground, so it means you're probably going to have to have a ladder. Some of the bushes are smaller, but when you get out there with the bigger fence rolls and stuff like that, obviously you're going to have to get up in the air. And I've got a 10-foot uh, fold-out ladder. Um, when you head out to do these, make sure that you've got plenty of time because you don't want to rush. You want to take your time. Uh, a, if you're rushing, you're going to lose a lot of berries because as soon as you touch them, they're going to fall off, off the tree, and, you're, and if you're in a rush, you're going to mess up. Two is that if you're in a rush, you may get off balance because the ground is always going to be on level. You're not going to have a whole lot of level ground when you're messing around in the yards. Uh, the ideal berries to get, you'll know it's no, no more time than you'll spend up there because when you touch them, they'll just fall right off in your hand. Uh, the next step, I'm going to take these home. We're going to clean them and uh, start the uh, jelly process, jelly making process. Okay guys, there's nothing nothing uh, special about cleaning these things. I just filled this coffee can up full of water. Let it set for a few minutes. And then just and then I just poured them into a colander.
We'll just let them set there for a few minutes. Hi, I'm Billy Poe. Welcome to my kitchen. Um, yesterday we collected about a half gallon of mulberries. They were, most of them were really, 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 really ripe and very sweet. I washed them and I let them set overnight in a strainer, but I got up this morning and I made a quart of mulberry syrup. Actually, my intention was to make mulberry jelly, but it turned out really, really watery because I didn't use enough pectin. But I'm going to walk you through the process of making mulberry jelly. And my wife and I have, through a process of a, trying, it, trying it a couple times, have come up with our own recipe. What I've got here is, uh, is six cups of, of mulberries, and I put them in two cups of water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook these down. And I'm going to smash them to get more flavor out of them. And once that I get these cooked down and, and uh, cooked down to a real thick sauce, then I'm going to strain it and I'll show you that in a few minutes. Once you put your uh, berries in here and two cups of water, I, I just uh, put it in a pan and I squished it up and I let it boil for, you know, brought it to a, a light bowl and then I poured, poured the... Uh, I poured the, the, the berries in here, and you see the juice in the bottom. And then you're just squeezing the juice through here to get a lot of the, some of the pulp and the seeds out. You're still going to get a few seeds through there. But not as many. And then what I'll do is take one spoonful of pulp, put it down in there, and we'll pour it back in the saucepan. Okay, the, the directions say the best thing to do is split your, your sugar. You want one container with one cup of sugar, and then one container with three cups of sugar. The reason for that is they say it's, it's better for the pectin you get a smoother distrib uh, dis uh, it distributes smoother when you mix the pectin into the sugar. Um, what happens if you pour it in, pour the pectin straight into the uh, the pot? It kind of clumps up a little bit, and, and you don't get an equal distribution of it. So, so we're trying something that's maybe totally wrong, but I like a real firm jelly, so I'm just going to use two two packs of pectin. And you want to mix the sugar and the pectin together to where it's evenly mixed up. And then we're gonna once we get this mixed up, we're gonna pour it into the uh, the liquid that we got, which if you want to take a look at it, uh, it's just a juice with a very little bit of the uh, the uh, the fruit into it. We're going to slowly bring this to a boil, and we're going to let it boil for about 10 minutes, and then we're going to uh, put the rest of the sugar in. Okay, what I've done here, I've brought this, I've taken about the last, I don't know, 7 to 10 minutes, and after I've added in my pectin and that one cup of sugar, I've just been slow stirring it and cooking it slow and bringing it to us up until now to a slow boil. And now you see how this slow boil is? Well, once I got to this slow boil, I'm going to take the rest of my sugar and I'll pour it in here. And I'm going to, I'm going to mix it up. Mix it all in. Get that sugar all in there good. Cook it in and then I'm going to bring it to a hard boil. And when I get it to a hard, when I crank up the heat and get it to a hard boil, I'm going to let it boil hard for one full minute. Okay, after I I uh, let the the full mixture come to a full boil, I just let it boil good for one full minute. You got to be careful. They say you can overcook the pectin and it won't gel up. Next, I just put these uh, 
these are four ounce four ounce jars. You want to leave a quarter inch head space, like in any any other Canon preserves or whatever. You want to leave a quarter inch head space. Okay, guys. Just just like with any other type of Canon, you have to prep your jars. You want to uh, get your jars hot. There's several different ways to do it. I just fill them up with water, throw them in a microwave, and then I ladle them. Then I ladle the uh, the contents in. I'll tell you, this is well worth its money. It's called a Canon funnel. And it just goes right down in there and it makes it a lot easier and less less messy. But when you get done, you want to make sure that you just wipe the tops of these lids off. So your so your uh lids will seal. Okay, once you do that, uh you also have to prep your lids. You want to drop this uh into hot water and then set it on there. You really don't have to crank down on them, just a snug fit. Okay, there you have it. Uh, my favorite by far wild berry is a mulberry and I thought I'd try to uh, make some jelly and jam. Now, out of that three quarters of a gallon, half to three quarters of a gallon of mulberries that I picked, I was able to get a full quart of mulberry syrup, and then twelve of these four ounce uh, jars of uh, of jelly. Now, the only process that I did leave out was where you boil it and uh, seal these cans down. But these are these are gifts that are going to go out, and they'll be gone in the next probably a month or so and everything that I've read said the process by just sealing them down in it, down on here and let the heat of the can make the seal will, is more than enough to store for a couple months especially when they're held in the refrigerator. I've learned this uh, process by two different three different ways a ball canning guide the internet and then uh, trial and error. Uh, in this process I've learned a lot when I do these videos I learn a lot but I had a really good time doing it. I hope that you get out and have a good time. And I, when you get a chance, try these mulberries. They're awesome. Thanks for watching.